Evening all. Told you I've invested. Okay. Now, in this video, um, looking at the cause of the flooding, as we talked about in today's lesson. Okay. Now, it is pretty straightforward, this, so it shouldn't take us too long. So what I suggest is, as you're going through, um, you take some notes and um, and draw whatever diagrams you need to in your books. Okay. So at the end of this tutorial, to know what flooding is, um, to understand the physical factors that affect it and to understand the human factors. So we're going to take these two things separately. But first things first, what is flooding? Well, flooding is simply, it occurs when there's too much water that gets into a river, causing a river level um, to get too high. This leads to a river spilling over its banks and the, um, onto the floodplain. Uh, flooding can be caused by human and by natural influences. So you'll all ex have experienced flooding, you'll all have seen it on the news. Um, it can be caused by all sorts of different things. And what I want to consider first, is I want to consider the physical factors first that cause flooding. As we go through this video, it will go quite quickly. So at any point where you need to, just pause it, make the notes in your book, whatever, okay? So let's go for the physical factors first. The first one is the obvious. And it's prolonged rainfall. So prolonged rainfall causes a problem for a reason. And that reason is shown, oh, in this image here, okay? Now this image is showing saturated ground, okay? Excuse my handwriting, saturated ground. Now saturated ground is caused by prolonged rainfall. So when it rains for too long, the, the water is sort of like a sponge, and it, it's the water, the ground is sort of like a sponge. And it can only hold a certain amount of water. So at the point where the ground become, has too much water in it, it becomes saturated, and that leads to a thing called runoff. Now you remember runoff from the drainage basin, okay? Now when no more water can get into the ground, this causes it to run off. So, let's have a look at a little, here's our ground, okay? And we've got a bit of a slope in it, okay? Now, when it rains, the water will fill up to a certain point. Don't know clay or things, whatever, okay? And it'll fill up all the spaces within the ground until that ground can hold no more. Okay, and when the ground can hold no more, that water starts to rise above the surface. Now, when it gets to the surface, because it can't infiltrate down anymore, and it can't when if it can continues to rain, it can't sort of infiltrate back down into the soil anymore. This causes the water to run off over the ground towards the nearest river channel. Okay, so prolonged rainfall leads to saturated ground, which in turn means that no more water can enter into the soil, it infiltrates into the soil, which means in turn more water runs over the, over the surface into the river. That means that the river's going to rise quicker and potentially flood faster. Okay, the next one is heavy rainfall. Now, heavy rainfall is important because if it rains so hard, okay, the water um, doesn't get an opportunity, if you like, to um, infiltrate into the ground. So what you find is that when it rains really, 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 really hard, that the water will like um, cause little puddles on top of the ground, whether it's soil, grass or whatever, you'll find puddles appearing on the ground. And if you imagine that's on a slope, then that water is going to then run into the nearest channel. So heavy rain um, causes water to get into the river channel faster. It increases the runoff, which means that the discharge of the river, how much water is going through the river, increases more rapidly, leading to the fact to the idea that it's going to flood. Okay. The next one is snow melt, and you'll recognise this because this happens quite regularly in winters in the UK. Because we tend to get, when it does snow, it's in a very, very short period of time. And then the sudden change in temperature leads to that snow melting very, 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 very quickly. Now, the snow is more often than not in the upland areas. Okay. There's our snow-capped mountains. Now, when that snow melts, when snow melts, oh, sorry. When snow melts, it turns into water. 
when it turns into water it's got to flow down the hills and into the river okay so snow milk when it, when it melts quite quickly leads to a lot of water being quickly added to the river so that leads to an increase in the um, discharge again which if you increase the discharge there's more water in the river if there's more water in the river there's a higher chance it's going to flood now the relief in the shape of the ground and the shape of the land sorry can also have an impact take this picture here for example we've got steep slopes flowing down towards the river now because of gravity any water that flows on those steep slopes is going to get into this river much quicker than for example a river that's on flat land clear okay so because it where the, where the ground has got steep slopes where the relief of the of the, the land is steep it means that water is going to get into the river faster so the runoff here runoff will be quicker so the time it takes the water to get down into the river is faster that means that the discharge of the river will increase which in turn leads to a higher chance it's going to flood. Where the land is flat, obviously because there's no gradient, it's, uh, the water will flow into the river off the land much, 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 much slower. So where water is flowing over the ground and into, into um, a river, it is much slower. Okay, So that means that the discharge doesn't ra rise as quickly the, because the runoff isn't as fast, therefore the chance of flooding is a bit less. The next one is geology. And when we talk about this, we've got to introduce two types of rock, okay? Permeable rock and impermeable rock. Now, the difference between permeable rock and impermeable rock is that permeable rock has gaps, pores, between each of um, the little pa the molecules or particles of rock, if you like. Whereas impermeable rock is a pretty solid sort of, is a pretty solid rock with very, very few pores in it, okay? We can call permeable rock porous. Okay, and we can call it that because it has pores in it. All right. Now, what that means is another term for you, and it's it's from um, the water cycle drainage basin work we did earlier. If the rock is permeable and has holes in it and pores in it, that means that water can percolate. Okay, into that rock, so water can travel down through the cracks in the rock. Okay. So if it can travel down through rock cracks in the rock, that means that it's almost being um, it's almost being absorbed by the rock. If you see, I know it's not quite absorbed, but um, it's it's moving down through the rock into the ground below. So it becomes groundwater. Now, in impermeable rock, that can't happen. So if it was to rain on this rock, you get a layer of water on top of it, and that water would just run straight up. If we were to take, and this is an example of a, like a clay-based rock. Now, if we take the limestone, for example, if it rains in onto this limestone, then some of that water will percolate into the rock. Okay, so where in areas where the geology is made up of um, permeable rock, it's less likely to flood because some water will percolate in through that rock. Where the geology of an area is made up of impermeable rock, it's more likely to flood because as it rains onto that rock, it's not percolated, it sits on top of that rock and it runs off that ground faster. Okay, It runs off that ground faster, it gets into the river quicker, the discharge of the river goes up and in turn it leads to a higher chance of flooding. So that's the physical factors and we're just going to look at the two human factors now. Okay, First one is deforestation. And deforestation simply means you should know this cutting down trees simple as that okay now why might cutting down trees near a river impact on um a, become like impact on floods or cause more floods if you like well quite simple if i had lots of trees here instead of lots of cut down trees what do those trees do well, firstly, when it rains, they intercept water. So 
but also trees are essentially a store of water so they soak up water from the ground okay and because of this if trees are present it means that the water is slower to get into the river because it's either intercepted by the leaves of the tree or it's stored within the root system of the tree if you deforest well that interception goes that store of water within the root system of the tree itself goes so in this case here the water hits the ground and simply flows in in an area where it's forested the water goes it becomes intercepted some of it is sucked up by the trees and event little bits of it will slowly make their way to the stream but in this or the river but in this instance where we've got deforested area that water gets into the river much quicker the runoff is faster because the trees are missing that means that in turn the discharge of the river increases quicker and if the discharge of the river increases quicker that leads to more chance of flooding the last one is urbanization now this is an image of Kendall my home star motherland okay now what urbanization does to increase the chance or the risk of flooding is it creates lots of impermeable surfaces okay permeable surfaces such as concrete tarmac etc okay we're also also so sorry if the impermeable surfaces are there then as we saw from the geology you're going to have increased runoff going to lead to increased discharge because the water's getting into the river faster and so on the other thing that um, urbanization creates is it, it increases um, the flow of water from underneath the ground because you've got drainage networks Ooh. now drainage networks are designed to shift water out of the urban areas into rivers fast um, in, a, in a quick way but what we're doing there is we're increasing the rate at which water gets into the river when it rains so therefore the, it were like um, in a man-made way artificially if you like increasing the flow of water into the river therefore making the discharge of the river increase which is going to increase the risk of flooding okay so those are our two main human sort of contributors if you like to increase chances of flooding so just to summarize <coughs> excuse me if you, um, I know that's quite quick, but you could be pausing it all the way through, go back, review bits that you didn't quite understand. Um, in summary, here we go. So deforestation, so these are for human factors. Deforestation means less trees, which means increased runoff, increased river discharge, and a higher risk of flooding. Urbanization means that there are more permeable surfaces, which means there's less percolation, which means that there's increased runoff, and then a fast increase in river discharge and a higher risk of flooding. We can also include in that bit there a bit about our drains and how they shift water faster to the river. In the physical factors, we've got prolonged rainfall, which leads to saturated land, which equals less infiltration, which means less uh, sorry, increased surface runoff, which leads to a quick increase in the river discharge, and that can cause flooding. Heavy rain means lots of runoff, which means a quick increase in the river discharge, which can cause flooding. Snow melt where lots of water is going to the river in a very short period of time. This leads to a quick increase in the river discharge, which can cause flooding. Um, the relief in the steep-sided valley means that the runoff is going to be faster, which is going to increase the river discharge and can cause flooding. And then in terms of the geology, we're looking at impermeable rocks with less percolation, increased um, runoff, cross out one of those equals is, which leads to a quick increase in the discharge and a high risk of flooding. So if you think about it, when we're thinking about the things that um, lead to um, the increased chance of flooding, we're looking at things that increase runoff, oh, that increase the runoff, and increase the discharge of a river. Okay, so those are the main points to remember. Use your revision guides as well to supplement this. But hopefully that gives you a quick um, sort of overview of the things that cause flooding. Now we use the information from this video next lesson to uh, start to develop the understanding of this a bit more detail. Okay, I hope this has been useful.